Welcome back to the Back to Space News Flash. Wow, it feels like it's been forever. And look, I got my bangs trimmed and they are back. I've missed you guys. So without further ado, let's get started with two whole weeks of information. Let's go. Let's start with this past Thursday, SpaceX successfully launched their 19th uncrewed Dragon spacecraft for NASA, and they sent fresh supplies to the International Space Station. And boy, did they stick that landing on the drone ship off the Florida coast. This particular dragon is loaded with some interesting things. For one, they're bringing some mice. Mighty mice, they're calling it, for the Rodent Research 19, RR-19 experiment. This investigation will help researchers better understand how to prevent muscle and bone loss both in space and on Earth for people with debilitating medical conditions. The RR-19 experiment has two major parts. Number one. The mighty mice that will be flown to the station to be studied have been genetically engineered to lack myostatin, a protein that inhibits muscle cell growth and therefore causes the animal to be extremely muscular. <laughs> Going to the gym. Here on Earth, animals and even people who have been born with less normal amounts of myostatin are very muscular, like myself as you can see. The second half of this experiment will involve unaltered mice. Once these mice arrive, they will be treated with an experimental drug that will block myostatin as well as activin, which naturally inhibits bone mass growth. So by blocking activin, the researchers hope to see if the mice maintain or even gain bone mass. So we'll see about those mice. I hope they brought three and I hope they're not blind. That was terrible, okay. But also they did send another thing. And that was beer. Anheuser-Busch and its Budweiser brand of beer are being sent to the team's fourth experiment to the space station that will evaluate how seeds germinate in the harsh environment of space. Researchers on the project want to better understand why different plant genes are turned off and on in space compared to the ones in the ground. To that end, the scientists will send up barley seeds to germinate in orbit before their growth is halted during the process known as malting. Yeah, sure, it's for science purposes. Uh-huh. I'm really buying that one. Well played, ISS. Just remember, don't drink and drive the International Space Station. <laughs> also, on the same launch, a robot with artificial intelligence is headed to the International Space Station along with the beer and the mice. It sounds like a great party. The Simon 2 Crew Interactive Mobile Companion robot is a new robotic companion made for astronauts in space. This terrifies me, but I'm not entirely sure why. Maybe it's because all of the space movies like uh, Moon and 2001 A Space Odyssey. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. Apparently, this is a predecessor to the first Simon, but this one has more updates. They released a quote saying, quote, for us, this is a piece of the future of human spaceflight, said the project leader. He also said, if you go out to the moon or to Mars, you cannot take all of mankind and engineers with you. So. The astronauts, they will be on their own. But with an artificial intelligence, you have instantly all the knowledge of mankind. That sounds a little creepy. I don't like it. Mm -mm. Our back to space astronaut Charlie Duke was named Texan of the Year. Amazing. Congrats and thank you for all that you do for back to space. Charlie Duke said, it is very special to me to be honored as Texan of the Year. We sort of adopted Texas as our home. Starting my career as an astronaut here in Texas was very, very special. As the 2020 Texan of the Year, Duke joins former President George H.W. Bush and George W. Bush, former First Lady Lady Bird Johnson, former Texas Governor William P. Hobby, and an array of U.S. Senators, entertainers, and business icons who have been similarly honored since 1974. Duke is the first astronaut to be named Texan of the Year. Way to go, we're so happy for you. So on November 23rd, China successfully launched two new navigation satellites into orbit via Long March 3B. So yay! However, they said the booster segments crashing into Earth. So basically there in Chichang, there is a satellite launch center and a couple of settlements downrange share videos and posts showing local buildings on fire and damage and the debris from the Long March 3B can be seen scattered around the area. This is terrible, right? But no, not really. This is familiar for the people living in this settlement or settlements around this area. However, Andrew Jones, a space journalist specializing in China's space program for space.com, which 
I love. He said, quote, the residents within the calculated drop zones for spent stages and boosters are warned and these areas are apparently evacuated. The fact that we often see amateur footage of boosters falling from the sky supports the notion that they are warned and expecting to see a falling spent rocket stage. He added, and he also said, the notice instructs people to go to a safe zone ahead of the launch and not to approach wreckage if they find it due to the harmful effects of the residual propellant. I don't know, I'm still thinking I would not like to take a walk with my dog and see that. So who knows what's really happening? Moving on, Europe has confirmed its participation in humanity's first full on planetary defense. By the way, if you haven't seen that Space Channel video about the asteroids coming to kill us, um, I was in it and I think you should. Anywho, the European Space Agency, the ESA, has officially approved the Hera mission. This will assist NASA's double asteroid redirection test, AKA DART. Kind of a cool name if you ask me. DART is scheduled to launch atop of a SpaceX Falcon 9 in July 2021, in which it will smash straight into Diddy Moon. That looks nice. So here comes Hera. It'll launch in 2023 or 2024, and it'll get to the Didymos system two years later. The European spacecraft will gather a, a variety of different data in the space rocks with the aid of two tiny CubeSats, both of which will perform asteroid landings. BSA officials have said DART won't be the first probe to smack an asteroid earlier this year. Japan's Hayabusa 2 spacecraft sent an impactor barreling into the space rock Yagu. That collision will likely help scientists better understand Yagu's internal structure so the Hayabusa 2 mission could have planetary defense applications. Anyways, we're all working together, come together right now to kill asteroids and keep us alive. Yay world, the past. On December 7, 1972, NASA launched the last crewed mission of the 20th century with Apollo 17. Three NASA astronauts flew to the moon that day. Gene Cernan was the commander, Ron Evans was the command module pilot, and Harrison Schmidt piloted the lander. Like most of the other Apollo missions, they lifted off the Kennedy Space Center's historic launch pad 39A on a gigantic Saturn V rocket. This is the last time a Saturn V rocket would launch astronauts into space, and it was the only nighttime launch of the entire Apollo program. The crew spent three days at the moon before heading home, and no one has been to the moon ever since. But we're planning on going back. So before we go into the future, why don't we give away the giveaway? So we have two, if you remember. First up, it's the tumbler. And it goes too. There were a lot of comments and I appreciate it. Brandon, I have such terrible lining. Brandon Lulizides. I'm sorry I wrote this in a hurry. But Brandon, you won! Yay! You get that tumbler, you drink that coffee, and you make a better day because you're drinking out of that tumbler. And now, the second, very pew, <laughs> very pew, the second giveaway. Very few people actually left comments, and it made me so sad. I cried every night. But I guess that uh, increases the chance for the people who did. Way to go, guys. And I forgot to mention what the giveaway is in the last video. So it's another Back to Space shirt. It's this one. I found it, in case you didn't notice. So let's see. It goes to Nick Mugley. So you get a shirt, yay. And so now for this week's giveaway, we are giving away an original piece by Esteban Guzman. He works as an artist at the Griffith Observatory and he is a fabulous artist as well as a great friend of mine. And it's also signed by him. So to win this, make sure you do three essential steps. One, you like this video. Two, you subscribe to this channel if you are already not. I said that backwards, but you know what I mean. And three, you leave a comment. Leave a comment, that's very important. Okay, so now we move on. The future. Artemis One is going to send up phantom women dummies. Does that sound questionable? On the crewless flight in order to test the radiation protection they are having from the best they are testing. The dummies are equipped with sensors and will be testing multiple variables to determine how well the vest will protect the future astronauts and the future astronauts will, if we're still on course, be women. A decision made at the recent World Radio Communication Conference could undermine the accuracy of weather forecasts by interfering with meteorological satellite observations according to the World Meteorological Organization. That for this purpose is named WMO and the European Center for Medium Range Weather Forecast. It's hard to say, ECMWF. 
WMO Secretary General said this WRC-19 decision has the potential to significantly degrade the accuracy of data collected in this frequency band, which would jeopardize the operation of existing Earth observation. Satellite system essentials for all weather forecasts and warning activities of the National Weather Services. <gasps> it's hard to get through. Potential effects of this could be felt across multiple impact areas, including aviation, shipping, agricultural, meteorology, and warning of extreme events, as well as our common ability to monitor climate change in the future. Oh, God. They said, quote, the race to release 5G technology threatens to squeeze out other radio frequencies dependent technologies, including the world's critical national severe weather and early warning system. So we got to figure that one out for the future. Am I right? Also today's shout out is the Space Collected. The owner Richard Garner has always been so supportive of Back to Space and his company is fantastic. Uh, the Space Collective sells NASA and space memorabilia, flown in space artifacts, and original Star Wars props and posters. They're amazing. Check them out. It's great for the holidays. Wouldn't it be amazing if Santa brought you something that was flown on an Apollo mission? I would say yeah. So check it out. I don't know why I was so... Um, aggressive about that. We have two student researchers this past week. The first is Kashan Hussein. He absolutely loves Star Wars. That's actually what got him into space. Not into space, but in, interested in space. He actually has a lightsaber that happens to resemble his school color. So at high school supporting events, it's become a staple of his student section. He loves robotics, has been competing in VEX robotics for the past five years, was a sister city exchange student from Seattle to Japan as part of the Seafair Ambassador Program, spent a week in Kobe, Japan, and hosted a student from Kobe, Japan in Washington. He has been the president of his class since sophomore year, and he loves to be involved in sports. He loves sports and enjoys all genres of music except for country. Overall, he just loves to have fun in life. Our second researcher is Crystal Horton. She loves the great outdoors. She welds in her free time. She has two desert tortoises. She met former President Obama when she was 12 years old through a science fair program. That is one way to meet a president by being smart. That's it for this week's Back to Space News Flash. Thanks everyone so much for watching. Again, I'm Danielle Dallas Russa and this is the Back to Space News Flash. Make sure you leave a comment, you subscribe, and you like this channel. There's dog hair in my face. Because you want this giveaway. You want, you want Estevan's artwork. I know that you do. So make sure you do those three things so you can have a nice gift for Christmas.